Hey there, I'm on the Canon R5C today and I got a backpack full of batteries. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm gonna take this out for a little bit of a hike. This is a new trail I've never been on before, but I'm still trying to explore on here. So let's go for a little bit of a walk and see what this camera can do. This is the first time taking this camera out to shoot with it. So you get to come along and, and see what it's all about. And I'm really curious about dynamic range. Autofocus looks like it's working great. One thing I noticed right off the bat is getting the exposure right is just so easy with the Canon Cinema operating system, which I love on the C70. So, you know, I'm shooting in C-Log3 and using the view assist. And generally, like, if it looks good on the screen, it turns out to look pretty good when you get in the computer. And I'm just double checking it with the waveform and the false color. So it looks good right now. I'll see what it looks like when I get home and, you know, take a look on the computer. But on this trail, there's supposed to be an abandoned homestead. So I'm gonna go look for that and see where this takes me. All right, this might be the old homestead area here. I see like a couple of buildings back here, so I'm gonna go check it out, maybe try out some slow-mo. All right, so this is super interesting. I don't know the history of this place whatsoever, but uh, it's a little creepy. There's a lot of like broken down buildings and foundations and stuff kind of in the middle of the woods here. But uh, it's cool to go check out. I just gotta be really careful. There's so much poison ivy around here. It's incredible. I'm very allergic to it. All right, so I'm gonna keep walking down the trail so we see. And I wanna talk to you a little bit also about why I decided to keep the R5C. All right, before I head down the trail, check out this tree. This thing is massive. Looks like I may be able to get down to the lake over there. We'll see if I can do that. Also, still in the first battery. Let's see how long this lasts for. This is about as close to the lake as I can get. And this trail did not advertise lake access whatsoever, but of course I had to sneak down and take a look. Now, if you watched my last video, which is, was about my first impressions of the R5C and some of the issues I had right out of the gate before even using it, the biggest thing I was complaining about was the fan noise on this camera. It doesn't seem right. And I really thought about it and talked to a lot of friends and I'm gonna keep the camera. And the reason for that is that this is a super powerful camera. And this is a camera that I really wanted for a long time, as I mentioned in that video. And unfortunately, sometimes with these early releases, these first batches that come out, there's issues. And a great example, which I talked about before, was the Canon C70 with the LCD screen and how it struggled. And, you know, Canon didn't recall it, but it, you could send your camera in, and you still can, and they'll fix it for free. And they, when I sent it in, they didn't even ask for a receipt or anything. So I think this will be kind of one of those things where if this is the one thing they screwed up with the design, they'll fix it in future batches that come out, but they'll have to like re-engineer it or figure out a way to fix it and they'll probably retroactively fix it. That's what I hope happens, but we'll see of course. I'm not can, I don't know how any of this stuff works. Uh, it was just rather disappointing and I was wanted to vent my frustration. It's also good to hear that other people are having that issue with their, their cameras as they're coming out because there's not a lot of these units out there at the moment when I'm recording this. It's a very new camera, it's a very expensive camera, so I'm not selling you know, a ton of them, but. Uh, so far, I'm really happy with the usability. I love the uh, interface and everything, as I mentioned before, with the cinema operating system and everything. But of course, I won't know what the images look like till I get home and use them in the computer. But what do you think? How's it looking so far? On to my second battery, and uh, <laughs> yes, battery life is not great on this camera, but I think we all knew that already. I would definitely be on my first battery if I was using an FX3. Anyways, this trail is super confusing because most of it has just been this old road and then all of a sudden it just darts into the woods here with a much skinnier trail. So I'm glad I'm using the All Trails app. Have you ever used that before? Not sponsored or anything, I'm just a user and it's really helpful because you can look up trails and then uh, your GPS on your phone tells you where you are and all that kind of stuff. And it's interesting around this area, there aren't very many people hiking. You know, I used to live out in Colorado and the trails are just so many, everyone goes hiking. So here I'm often like walking around and I have no idea where I'm going. So super handy. All right, so I'm gonna start heading back now before the uh, thunderstorms roll in this afternoon.
There are definitely trail markers here on this part of the trail, which is great. There weren't on the road section. Anyways, we want to test out the stabilization. So I know a lot of people were critical about this camera because it doesn't have IBIS, but I'm hand holding the camera right now by the lens. I don't know who's going to be vlogging with this camera. This is very heavy, but this is with the electronic stabilization that's in the body and the stabilization that's in the lens. This is the RF 15 to 35. Now for me, I'm more curious about how it works holding the camera when you're behind the camera for a static shot like this. This is at 24 millimeters. Almost got lost again. <laughs> I was following the white circle trail like I just showed you and apparently the trail that I'm following from all trails is a combination of trails. That makes more sense now. Anyways, I was heading out on this way and it was not the right way. I thought I was paying attention. I gotta head over this way, but check this out. So crazy seeing the huge root structure from a tree after it falls. Always amazes me. Let me ask you, do you like the peanut butter ones or the cheese ones? We got munchies for a road trip. The kids ate all the cheese ones and no one ate the peanut butter ones, so that's my job. All right, back in the truck. It was a fantastic hike. I think uh, a little bit longer than anticipated, but it's all good. This whole thing was shot in XF AVC 10 bit 422 long op, if you guys were curious. I'm also still on my second battery. And one thing I wanna point out, which is great about this operating system, is that it shows the battery time that's left on the screen. And when you switch frame rates, it actually adjusts appropriately because a higher frame rate will use more power. And also when the battery level starts getting very low, the tally lamp starts flashing somewhere around like five minutes left, which is great. Battery life is definitely a concern with this camera. Uh, I think for me, yeah, I could do this whole thing with two batteries, I'm cool. I have a third battery in my bag. I think a lot of people are gonna be rigging up this camera uh, with external batteries. Maybe a battery grip could be a cool idea too. But for me personally, I wanna keep this camera as small as possible. So as I said earlier, this is the first time I've gotten this camera out to shoot with it and I'm sharing that with you. And I wanted to give you some real life images to take a look at. I think when you get any camera, you always have to learn the exposure and how to expose the camera properly to get the best possible image. So I will get better over time after I go through and look through the footage and practice a few more times. I will be doing a bunch of videos on this camera. So <clears throat> detailed comparisons, really nerdy stuff about this versus the C70 and the FX3. So if you're interested in that, along with videography and content creation stuff, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. What do you think of the R5C? Do you have an R5C? Are you looking to get one? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I really appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one.